What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. What the heck is a mediator, anyway? Everyone else had already grasped the situation. I asked the question outright, and Ruminez was the one who explained it to me. A mediator is a system that exists separately from heroes and demon lords. It is said that a mediator's goal is to prevent the destruction of the world and to be the spokesperson of its creator, Star King Dragon Veldanava. That's right. My older brother, the Star King Dragon Veldanava, established that system to prevent the world he worked hard to create from collapsing. I see. That would explain why Veldora was punished, in order to prevent him from destroying the world. It made a lot of sense to me. Also, as a result of Veldora's story, I was able to confirm that true dragons could resurrect. I still doubted whether he really lost his memory about that incident, but let's not point that out. Got it. So, Gee's unlikely to go after Chloe now. Yeah. I also recall Krona rampaging, and I think what Demon Lord Gee did was reasonable, so I don't plan to hold any grudges against him. Hanata and Chloe seemed rather convinced and had spoken with smiles on their faces. We could avoid a fight with Gee as long as we nipped potential causes for violence in the bud. If that's the case, can we permit Leon to explain this matter to Gee? I proposed. Of course. After all, the future of me and Chloe is at stake here. Leon stated with firm conviction. Leon Oni Chan. Chloe quickly pointed out. Has nothing to do with this. Such innocence was quite scary. I felt a bit of sympathy for Leon. While Leon was very handsome and cool, the world apparently universally recognized him as a villain. As was the case with Shizu San, Leon seemed to be a poor talker and was haunted by a guise of evil. Maybe that was why he was so easily misunderstood. In layman's terms, he was the polar opposite of Masayuki. Chloe treated him like the friendly neighborhood Oni-chan. Not even a shred of romantic interest existed in her mind. Leon appeared to have been a popular man for a long time. But that might be the reason why Chloe was completely unaware of the affection he showed her. When I thought about it, he was also a pitiful man. And so, I came to the conclusion that I should be a little kinder towards him. The two demon lords promising their cooperation was proof in itself that this conference was a resounding success. Thus, the only thing left to be wary of was the Empire. We still needed to come up with our own plans after the meeting, so when I was about to formally declare the end of our discussion. Please wait. We have guests right now, and they are in the middle of an important meeting. Oh, I'm amazed you noticed me coming. But, you see, I made the effort to come all the way here, so let me just say hi. A commotion could be heard from the corridor. I mean, this voice and the arrogant attitude from that conversation just now could only mean one thing. The person right outside the room was unmistakably the strongest demon lord, Guy. I could count the number of people who were able to slip under my radar, an impressive feat, might I add, on one hand. Report. No hostility detected. Don't tell me you noticed him? But now was not the time to argue. I hurriedly got up from my seat. But before I could move any further, Diablo, who was standing behind me, headed to the door with a sour look on his face. Yo. Go home. Following that brief exchange, Diablo slammed the door shut with a bang. We were all frozen in shock at the incredible spectacle before us. The door reopened and Guy stormed in, yelling. Hey, hey, come on now, Diablo. You're interrupting this important meeting. It hasn't even been a day yet, which is why I'm still unprepared. I want to take my time speaking with you, so please don't come here until I invite you. Despite Diablo's polite words, his attitude towards the one he was addressing, he, sure was self-assertive. Or perhaps they know each other? I wasn't the only one who had the same thought. Even Ruminas and Leon were surprised. Unbelievable. He didn't budge an inch against Guy, as expected of Noir. Noir, you say? Why is somebody like him working under Rimuru? Hmm? Listening in, there was something rather disconcerting about the words being spoken around me. Is Diablo that significant of a figure? Well, I guess he's got a cocky attitude. Seriously, what does Noir even mean? While I was standing there, utterly bewildered, more disturbances arrived. The first to come running here was Benamaru, followed by Soe, hot on his heels. Next was Carrera, and almost at the same exact time, Ultima burst into the room, too. Rimuru-sama, are you all right? Benamaru pressed. Just now, my sister told me. My lord. Carrera said urgently. I felt the presence of Red. Has the war started? If so, I will do my best. Ultima promised. It was pandemonium. Given the circumstances, it would be a better idea to receive Guy as a guest than to drive him away. I had no intentions of inviting Guy here to begin with. I'd have to ring out Diablo later to find out what the deal is. 
But for now, the first priority was to get this place in order. Guys, calm down. Diablo, control yourself. My words quieted the people who had just barged in. Once everyone in the room collected themselves, I continued. Although this wasn't planned, we do have something to talk about with you, Gi. Since you've come all the way here, I'm going to ask you to join our meeting, is that all right? I checked with Gi. Yeah, I also need to discuss something with you, so this is good timing. Leon was supposed to explain everything to Gi, but it looks like there was a change of plans. And so, with Gi's attendance confirmed, I decided to dismiss the people that had assembled. Don't worry, I'll call if something happens, so for now, you guys can get back to work. When I said that, everyone had a look of relief. I had to do a double take when I heard certain people spout lines like, as expected of, Red. I'm still no match for him now, huh? Or, I thought this was my opportunity to go all out, but in the end, the situation was somehow brought under control. Everyone that had gathered returned to their respective jobs. Then, Shuna left the room to prepare tea for those who remained in the room. Immediately after her departure, Leon spoke up. Hey, what's the meaning of this? Why is John here? Hmm? I have a question, too. Isn't that other person Violet, or is it just my imagination? I'm not sure because, from what I have heard, she allegedly has a more gloomy and malicious personality. Hmm? What are these guys blathering about with this John and Violet thing? Ah, maybe? Did you mean Carrera and Ultima? They were recruited by Diablo over there, and they've been better than I expected. I tried to explain, but was unable to finish my sentence. Carrera? And Ultima? You, you've given them names. I can't believe it. So what you are saying is you not only have Diablo, but other primordials attending you as well. Leon had suddenly stood up and yelled at me, whereas Ruminas looked genuinely astonished. Their sharp gazes pierced right through me. See, you're flabbergasted too. This is also the reason why I came here, to ask this guy about his real motive. Even Guy blurted something out of left field. I'd like to answer you, but I don't really know what to say, okay? While I was puzzling over how to respond, Shuna entered, pushing a tea cart. We became quiet so we wouldn't hinder her work. A pleasant smell wafted through the air and brought a sense of calm to everyone's mind. It also helped keep my wits about me as I tried to piece together what these guys were saying. The keyword was, primordial, which Ruminas had just mentioned. And by primordial, answer, one of the criteria for classifying a demon. Right, I remember, you explained it to me before. If I'm not mistaken, the original demons are called, primordials. Wait, the original demons. Diablo, are you, by some chance, one of the original demons? Upon asking Diablo, he casually replied. Well, yes, indeed, I am the progenitor of one of the seven original lineages to the demon race born in this world. Oi oi, are you serious? I couldn't believe the demon I had summoned when I was about to evolve into a demon lord was such a prominent figure. I knew he was very strong, yet evidently, he was even more dangerous than I'd anticipated. No way, don't tell me you didn't know. Unbelievable. I thought you were careless, but I never expected you to be clueless. Leon and Ruminaz stares hurt. After all, it couldn't be helped, right? How was I supposed to know he was that big of a deal if he answered a random summoning of mine? Even Raphael San was speechless. Although, that reaction wasn't directed towards Diablo's true identity, but rather at my ignorance. It was under the impression that I already knew about the primordial demons. No, wait a sec. Come to think of it, I felt that Elmija, the Empress of Sarian, had mentioned the primordials before. That would explain why she was so wary of Diablo, she already knew his true identity. Had I been more attentive, I would have noticed Diablo's real character much earlier. Well, this was what you called, making assumptions. I never dug any deeper nor did I try to bring it up. For Raphael San, it merely decided that there was no need to inform me. This was a major pitfall. For example, if you had a dictionary on hand, it would be worthless if you didn't use it. Raphael San had recently been giving me advice, but even it wasn't omnipotent. There was no way it could figure out what I did and didn't know. No matter how brilliant your partner was, if you didn't fully utilize it, then it was useless. Never had this been more true. Putting aside my surprise, Diablo began to share how he met me. Apparently, it went back to my encounter with Shizu San. There seemed to be a connection between Diablo and Shizu San, and when he sensed that she was about to die, he happened to visit this place. It was a surprise that Diablo already had his eyes on us back then, but I had no clue regarding his intention for doing so. A low-ranking demon from my lineage stole my position in line and ended up getting summoned by Rimaru-sama instead. That was the height of my sorrow. However, I stayed calm and waited for another opportunity, and splendidly enough, 
I was able to successfully respond to Rimuru Sama's summoning. Diablo finished, grinning from ear to ear. Then, Diablo responding to the summoning wasn't pure luck, but rather inevitable since he was already aiming for it in the first place? I was so taken aback that my head started to hurt. Also, this was news to me, but Diablo was evidently jealous of Beretta and tried to purge him behind my back. Despite that, he mentioned how he couldn't hurt Beretta because it would have been sacrilegious to damage the body I had created for him. This body is handmade by Rimura Sama, warned Beretta. So if you lay a finger on it, you will incur his displeasure. I was dumbfounded, to say the least. But honestly, Diablo's story was excessively long. The thought that someone should go and stop him occurred to me, yet Diablo's fervor was too great for anyone to interfere. There was no other option. I had to bite the bullet. Diablo, Diablo-kun, that's enough. The meeting is about to start again. Following my lead, Guy spoke next. You're already satisfied, aren't you? More importantly, that guy Dino is also here, right? Can you call him over for me? Prompted by Guy's words, Diablo's endless chatter had finally come to an end. Well then, I shall summon Dino-sama. Shuna, who had sadly missed her window to escape from this torment, left with a polite bow. She ran away, the fact that I thought of Shuna this way was proof that I was at my wit's end. But I'm just about to reach the good part. While Diablo obviously still had a lot more to say, everyone shared the same sentiment and simply ignored him. I didn't know what he might even begin to reveal if we heard any more of his story. Also, it was better for Diablo to keep his mouth shut for the sake of my own peace of mind. Guy's seat had apparently been set up in the midst of the uproar. It was a guest armchair brought in by Leon's subordinates from an adjacent waiting room. Oh, how thoughtful of you. Guy's words were answered by Leon's subordinate knights, Alrose and Claude, with a light bow. The two were apparently already acquainted with Guy. Otherwise, neither of them would have dared to engage in such reckless behavior, given that this was Guy we were talking about here. That's it for this video guys, thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel.